ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the earning conference call for gm financial limited as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone kindly note that any forward looking statements made on this call are based on the management's current expectations however the actual results may vary significantly and therefore the accuracy and completeness of this expectation cannot be guaranteed please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr vishal kampani thank you and over to you sir thank you on behalf of jm financial we extend a very warm welcome to all of you to the earnings conference call to discuss our financial results for the first quarter ended june 2024 we have uploaded our results update presentation press release on the website and stock exchanges i hope you have had a chance to go through the same on the call we also have uh, mr chirag negandi managing director jm financial limited Ms. Sonia Das Gupta, Managing Director and CEO, Investment Banking, Jain Financial Limited; Mr. Manish Shet, MD and CEO of Jain Financial Home Loans; and Nishit Shah, our Group CFO. I will uh, give a few introductory points, and then I'll hand over uh, the call to Nishit to take you through the numbers. Uh, I've already updated most of you in our May call on uh, a few of the strategic uh, sort of. Uh, initiatives we have taken in the group uh, the first being on uh, a pivot in our wholesale credit businesses from moving from a on balance sheet uh, lending and a on balance sheet uh, loan book driven business to more of a uh, off balance sheet syndication business across asset classes like real estate distress credit uh, corporate credit uh, as well as promoter credit and on the focus businesses we will continue to cover the entire breadth of wealth management asset management uh, capital markets corporate advisory and our investments in these businesses will uh, continue to uh, increase over a period of time we are seeing a, a tremendous traction in these businesses uh, and we are also very pleased with the amount of integration that is happening across these different business units and the opportunities these uh, these units are throwing up uh, there is also very strong tailwinds in affordable home loans business and again we will continue investing in both physical infrastructure and technology uh, to grow that business larger <clears throat> i'm also happy to report that the assets under management of our, our wealth management and distribution business has crossed a very important milestone for us in the group of 1 lakh crores and i'm also extremely pleased to uh, uh uh say that our aum for our mutual fund business has achieved another very important milestone of 10000 crores uh, of which almost uh, 7500 crores is equity um we've also made a very important uh, strategic announcement uh, uh a month ago on uh, on what we are doing with Uh, our uh, our stake in uh, jm financial credit solutions as uh, most of you know jm financial credit solutions is uh, a business we had set up uh, in 2014 uh, along with a couple of investors led by mr vikram pandit uh, this is an entity which is uh, completely focused on our wholesale lending business across real estate uh, corporate uh, financials and uh, uh, this entity uh the the investors had a fund life of 10 years uh which was basically ending in november 2024 and uh, you know we have been in discussions with them uh for the last couple of uh, months uh and finally we concluded a transaction where we will be uh, ajm financial limited will be increasing its stake uh to uh, up to 95.65% uh, in this company by purchasing Uh, 49% up to 49% of the investor stake uh, for an amount of uh, 1460 crores uh, the stake will be purchased in tranches uh, currently the investors have only agreed uh, to sell 43% uh, and for that our commitment will be uh, 1280 crores 
Um, so the, uh, the transaction uh, uh, will, of course, uh, need regulatory approvals. Our teams are working with the regulators uh, to get the approvals, and we are hopeful that we should be able to conclude uh, this purchase uh, before uh, November 24. Um, and we also have an option uh, to, uh, you know, have JM Financial Credit Solutions purchase our stake in JM Financial ARC, uh, uh, and uh, we will decide uh, on that option again uh, before November 2024. Uh, this would be a purchase of almost 71%, uh, and thereby transferring all of our interest in the ARC uh, under JM Financial Credit Solutions. So this is an important update uh, on, uh, on what we are doing uh, you know, with Credit Solutions, and we have surplus cash uh, in the group to be able to easily uh, conclude this transaction. And post concluding this transaction, of course, our earnings consolidation uh, from the profits of JM Financial Credit Solutions will increase from 46% to almost uh, 96%. So with this brief update, uh, I will now hand over to Nishit uh, to take you through the numbers. And after that, uh, we can uh, address uh, uh, question and answers. If you see our, uh, our results update and presentation that we have put up uh, for this quarter, uh, we have highlighted on page four, five, six, and seven some some uh, some data and some uh, uh, quick thoughts on our strategy. I would urge uh, all of you to look at those four pages. An uh, important reason uh, to put up these pages also is that we are looking at our business a bit differently from the way we modeled it for the last 10 years. Uh, and uh, the new model will uh, uh, will focus on four different verticals, uh, the first being uh, corporate advisory and capital markets, um, the second being wealth and asset management, uh, the third, private uh, credit syndication, and the fourth, the affordable home loans business. Uh, this simplifies uh, our structure. It also adds uh, a lot of focus on management in terms of deliverables over the next couple of years. And uh, the team here, consisting of Chirag, Sonia, and Manish, uh, will be happy to answer more questions along with me once Nishit takes you all through the numbers. Thank you. Thank you, Vishal. Uh, during the quarter ended June 2024, consolidated revenues increased by 1% and stood at 1,094 crores. Profit after tax, after non-controlling interest, on the same period increased by 3% year on year from Rs. 166 crores to Rs. 171 crores. The consolidated network excluding non-controlling interest stood at Rs. 8,612 crores which translates into a book value of Rs. 90 per share. Retail mortgage loan book stood at Rs. 3,267 crores compared to 2,033 crores for the same period last year an increase of 61% year on year. The rest of the loan book has declined from 13,858 crore to rupees 8,666 crore during the quarter ended June 30, 2024, a decline of 37% year on year. The SEBI margin financing loan book grew more than two times during this period and stood at rupees 1,806 crore as of June 30, 2024. On a consolidated basis, our debt to equity stood at 1.4 times and cash and cash equivalents stood at approximately 4,000 crores. With this, I would like to conclude and we are happy to take any questions. Over to the moderator. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Digant Haria from Green Edge Wealth. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, Vishal, uh, one question to you, uh, you know, I. I was just seeing that, you know, we have always operated with very good capital adequacy, you know, right from, say, 2014, when we started this NBFC business. And now once we shut this down, uh, or, you know, once we run this down, 
uh, we'll be sitting with you know even more capital so just any thoughts i heard your last call where you know we will be doing aifs and private credit but still you know the quantum of capital that is going to be released is going to be quite huge and and you know any thoughts on uh, you know will we you know will we accelerate more on the investment banking uh, institutional equities mutual fund wealth uh, you know those businesses uh, yeah. that's my first question sure so uh, <clears throat> let me answer the question on capital and then i'll hand it over to uh, chirag and sonia to give a brief on uh, investment banking institutional and wealth and all those businesses so yes began we will we will generate surplus capital but as you know we still have debt to repay and from a lender perspective uh, it is very difficult to distribute all of the cash flow till the debt comes down so our net debt comes down very very quickly uh, if you see on page 7 of the presentation that we have provided it gives you a good perspective of how across our three entities where Uh, we will be paying down debt what the movement of cash and cash equivalents is uh, versus loan book is and you can see a substantial amount of cash generation uh, for example in jm financial products our current cash as of june 30th is 639 crores which accretes in two years to 2500 crores jm financial credit solutions 1800 crores accretes to 4200 crores now what happens is we still have gross debt even though we have net cash we have gross debt outstanding so i think uh, our payouts will increase over the next 3 to 4 years but they will dramatically increase after 2 years because at that point in time uh, we will not need this kind of surplus capital and also the people who hold debt in these nbfcs will be comfortable enough uh, for us to release cash uh second uh, the purchase that we are making in credit solutions today is going to cost us almost 1400 crores uh this is a very thoughtful purchase uh, we see a lot of long term value uh you know in terms of the expertise that we have built in this business and we are very confident of our pivot in terms of creating land aifs and building a absolutely global distribution uh for the india credit product and i don't think there are many players on the street Uh, who understand uh, financing right from loan against shares promote of financing corporate financing real estate land financing real estate structured financing all the way to distress credit we have seen the good cycle of that play out when we started the business from 2007 all the way to 2019 and we've also seen the bad cycle play out between 2019 to 2024 and i think we're going to bring all of those expertise together under one roof jm financial credit solutions and really build a very strong and solid business a uh, second point digant is that our uh, our our investment bank and wealth management uh, will throw up a lot of cash as well and as you know those are very capital light businesses today we are investing in digital broking as well as asset management but those investments will stop in 2 years as each of those businesses will turn cash flow positive and the distribution from those businesses also will accrete uh, dramatically so it's about a about a two year consolidation phase and that's why we've explained that whole strategy in those four pages uh, another reason to give those pages is that you can now queue on queue track how the old business and the old structure is reporting this year versus how the new structure is reporting and you will have those comparable numbers with you even next year uh another uh, another thing to keep in mind is that RBI does not allow more than 50% dividend distribution of pat from its nbfcs uh, once we bring leverage down we will appeal to rbi to at least release uh, that for us uh, in terms of uh, you know allowing us to pay more dividend if that is allowed then of course the payout ratio will go up much more and much higher uh, so these are some of the uh, thoughts uh, happy to answer more questions offline nishit has all the numbers uh but chirag sonia if you guys want to add anything on uh investment banking institutional equities wealth management uh, free to do so unless they going to have any more questions uh no w- one last question vishal i had you know i saw this likes number you know 5 6 7 uh, you know a good you know good summary of how the next 2 years rundown will happen uh you know are are all over you know customers uh, you know everybody is aligned to the fact that this rundown will happen and you don't expect any any knee jerks in this rundown no no so we have we have very carefully done 
the due diligence on the entire book of jain financial credit solutions in fact literally we have gone account by account before we decided to make the purchase uh, from mr pandit so uh, fingers crossed i mean barring any very bad macro event like covid or what we saw in ilfs uh, i think the book is quite solid uh, and jain financial products actually is a very liquid book uh it's assets are very liquid uh, loan again share is anyway run down and uh, we have lot of msme and hfc assets which are very liquid and can be sold at any point in time uh and uh, the promoter finance loan book anyway runs down in less than 12 to 18 months so those are very liquid assets uh in the arc we've taken very heavy provisions i don't think the incremental provisions are large the incremental provisions are all with eight year accounts uh and uh, we are seeing a lot of liquidity in fact we've had 5 to 600 crores of cash generation in terms of uh, what we've resolved just in last quarter uh, we expect that momentum over the next 4 to 6 quarters so uh, these numbers i would say you can easily take them I and mean, if you want to discount them you can discount them by 10% but not more than that all right that that's great vishal thank you and all the best for the you know work the second uh, second innings of jm thank you Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Nitin Dharmawat from Aurum Capital. Please go ahead. Mr. Nitin. We can't hear you, Mr. Nathan. This is me. Hello. Uh, so the line for Mr. Nathan seems to be disconnected. A reminder okay. to the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Himanshu Padhey from Burgle Rock. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my question yeah, was the, the disbursal in home finance are down by thirty percent by a while and seventy five percent Q on Q. Can you explain the reason for it? Means uh, why such a significant fall in disbursal? This is uh, on the slide. Uh, on the home finance business where we have given yes manish will take that question yes so basically you know in the home finance business uh, april may are the month always a dull month special because we are operating in tier 2 tier 3 cities and as you know interior there is a challenge in terms of water supply and majority of our home loan business is either self construction or plot plus construction so that gives us uh, you know always if you see the first quarter is like this only on top of it we have done first time the uh, you know assignment uh, to uh, one of the leading player uh, so 100 crore we have sold down during the quarter so if you net that out uh, actually we have done more disbursement than the comparable quarter last year but net of that uh, our disbursement overall looks uh, uh, sorry our aum overall looks down okay so the uh, disbursal would be 200 crores you are saying means which is uh, 116 crores in q1 fy25 it seems so disbursement is 116 crore there was one important uh, regulatory change if you really have noticed uh, by nsb and rbi that earlier what everybody used to do is a disbursement which is you know we used to prepare a check and uh, we were giving them the timeline of you know 30 to 60 days to encase the check until then it was shown as disbursement but with the regulatory change uh, the disbursement is to be booked only when the check is banked by the customer so if that number i would add if that number is around 50 crore more than what we have shown even in uh, this quarter and uh, one more thing uh, in the wholesale business have we done any deal on syndicating transactions because uh, that is the way ahead we are seeing and uh, so are we disbursing uh, currently loans in credit solutions uh, or uh, have we done it in last uh, two quarters and is there any approval or structuring needs to be done for 
But the way we are thinking about syndication, so approval from regulators or any place. Uh, yeah. So last there. question, we don't need any approvals from any regulator. This is a normal course of business. The answer to your first question is yes. On the corporate side, we have a very active syndication business, which we've been running for the last uh, almost three years, and it has done very well. We are extending those expertise now to real estate, distress credit, as well as promoter finance. Uh, and yes, we already have a full-fledged approval mechanism in place for syndication of loans, which is very, very similar to our credit approval process across all of these asset categories. Um, so that is clear. And last, yes, we, we are not going to close down our lending business. We are going to lend. We will have a hold in many of the syndication transactions that we do, but our concentration risk will go down dramatically and we will keep the book very liquid. So to give you a very simple example, if you are able to originate, say, 8,000 crores of volume in a year, if our balance sheet could keep the entire 8,000 crore of volume, going forward, our balance sheet will not keep, say, more than 1,600 crores of volume, but we will effectively syndicate and sell down 6,400 crores of it. So that is the concept. You know, in syndication of business, uh, very rarely can you do a syndication where you sell down 100% of your loans. You always have to have some balance sheet capacity to hold. Uh, and that is why there will be a portion of our liquidity which we will use uh, to facilitate uh, the growth of our syndication business. And that is a point we have highlighted if you see on uh, page four uh, of the presentation that we've put up, that some part of the liquidity uh, will support uh, the pivot to the syndication model. And in FIF also, this uh, means we have started uh, doing syndication transaction, means financial institution funding. Yeah, yeah, it will be across financial institutions, it will be across uh, real estate, it will be across corporate. Uh, if I were to tell you, among the three, the, the largest volume uh, we see will be in corporate, followed by real estate and followed by financial. And one follow up on this, see uh, earlier what we were trying to do was seven to 8,000 crore of dispersal in a year, okay? Yeah, yeah. Credit solutions business. But we were yeah. finding a challenge that we were not finding so many good builders, okay? That uh, who... Oh, no, we were, we were finding good builders, but we were not finding good builders at our rates. But so now the rates would be significantly lower or what would be the rates... Uh, uh, in syndication, you are able to do the deals around. Something no, so there are, there are two things in the business. So one is the rates for construction finance, and second is the rates for land and the rates for approval finance. So you have to understand that from a regulatory perspective, it is becoming challenging to do land finance and approval finance in an NDFC. So that business is pivoting very, very quickly to the capital market. So you have uh, AIX, you have foreign funds, and you have a lot of uh, HNI customers who are now taking a part of this business. So there it is going to be an AIF-led syndication model for land finance. But on the construction finance side, we will continue uh, to support with our balance sheet, but we will syndicate down to banks and other larger NBFCs using the relationships that we have. On the corporate side, it is all uh, promoter finance and structured finance. We do not do working capital finance and we do not do project finance. And uh, we will not be entering those spaces. That is a domain of the banks and it is better done by banks. And one follow up, historically when we were just seeding these businesses or the credit solutions, the thought was uh, that we were too dependent on capital markets and we want to diversify into lending business so that the business becomes more stable, okay? Yes. If, uh, if I look at it, we'll be more focused on the fee income type of business, what we're trying to create in these businesses. How dependent yeah. will be these businesses on strong capital markets? So let's say uh, the credit solutions, uh, uh, if the market goes bad okay, for six months or a year, will the fee income be still be there? And how big would be the costs on that side and can the fee income overcome those costs fixed costs which will be there because names will not be there or the quantum of uh, no i don't i don't think that will be a challenge because even if you just look at the 
if you go to page 7 right and if you just see the amount of cash we are going to generate in credit solutions uh that number itself is upwards of 4000 crores in 2 years assuming for a second we deploy even half of that to help our syndication business at that point in time that itself will generate a 12 to 13% yield at the minimum and just that 2000 crore deployment will take care of all our costs uh but you know it see when you talk about capital markets when 10 years ago when we set up the business it was largely equity capital markets one is that the equity capital markets have become very very different i mean the size is just humongous the kind of products we do in equity capital markets are very different i mean we were a large player for example now in block trading it's something we never did 10 years ago i'm just giving you an example so one is that the depth of the equity capital market has increased and we are seeing lesser cyclicality in that business from the macro position india is in today second uh, this is a private credit business so it's actually a hedge to our equity capital market business so tomorrow our equity capital market business slows down this business will not slow down people will allocate more capital towards you know debt and other uh, yielding products if there is a sustained slow down in equity capital markets we don't expect a sustained slow down in equity capital markets but going by your worst case if that were to happen even if it were to happen uh this business will be will still be a hedge and it will be a hedge with a lot lower risk because when you have your sales and distribution relationships in place uh you know then it is just about being able to originate the transactions and the origination is already present in our investment banking and our wealth management business which the team on the call with me is rapidly building okay thank you i have few more queries i'll join back in the queue yeah So you can go ahead right now. Don't worry. Can you finish your queries? See, uh, in the slide seven, we have shown how the loan book will reduce. Okay, so is the underlying assumption that both JM Financial products and credit solutions no new disbursal will happen? So that, would that be the assumptions uh, when you are? Yeah. Uh, that is a very good question. Time. That's a very good question. It can give clarity to everyone. So this, these numbers are based on an assumption that we will not do. any new disbursements okay this is very simply outstanding gross book loan book coming down as per schedule of repayment gross debt coming down as per schedule of repayment and therefore the accretion in cash generation so this cash that you see of 6500 crores being generated here uh, by june 26 it is our decision on how much of that cash to be distribute how much of that cash to be invested in treasury and how much of that cash to be used to support the syndication business as a thumb rule i mean it's very hard for me to give you an exact number you can just assume one third one third one third would be the plan okay thanks for the clarity and one last question uh, yesterday we said in the pgm okay that we want or the employees want to have esops of the businesses what they are doing okay correct and uh, three companies are there so home finance and uh, they don't want the esops of uh, jm financial limited okay but yeah. uh, what do we think that in future you will be having three listed entities once the scale up or how will that turn around means will because uh, there is synergy in all these three businesses and cross selling opportunity what is yeah. the, your thought means some more, more yeah. clarity there yeah so i think let's look at the breakup of those three entities there is one entity which is jm financial services which is our wealth management and broking entity then we have jm financial asset management which is our mutual fund and our credit ai business and third is jm financial home loan which is our affordable home loans business now if you look at the team and the professionals who are working in these companies they literally have got nothing to do with the other company and they've got nothing to do with the investment banking and the institutional equities business and to attract the right talent we have decided and taken a decision that we will be giving employee stock options for the teams that are focused in these businesses in these respective companies today for the next 2 to 4 years we are only focused on growth uh, heads down trying to scale these businesses once they reach a certain amount of scale we will take a decision on what is the best way to unlock 
the value created for the employees and for the shareholders of Jane Financial Limited. It is a bit premature to decide today how we will do that. The obvious routes to do that is to IPO the business or to demerge the business uh, from, from the parent company. But as I said, we do not want to comment on what route we will use and how we will do it. But what we will definitely say is that we will do one of these actions for these businesses after two years and maybe before five years from now when sufficient scale and size is achieved. Okay. Thanks, sir. And I hope we continue the quarterly call uh, from here on. Thanks. Once we, once, once we start, we don't stop. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is a follow-up from the line of Digan Tharia from Green Edge Wealth. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah I had one question on, uh, you know, the, the talent crunch or, you know, so to say in these entire capital market business, like you just mentioned that, you know, these, you know, capital market over the last five years have grown so much in size. Uh, you know, do, you, do we find it difficult uh, to to really retain or, you know, get people uh, in the wealth management, uh, you know, the AMC and, and those businesses. And, and I heard the previous participant that, you know, giving the ESOPs of the businesses where, uh, you know, people are working, that could be one strategy to retain the talent for long term. Yeah, Chirag will take that question. Uh, hi, Vikas. Uh, Chirag Nikandi here. So it's a, it's a great question. And uh, I think... If you talk about the industry per se, there is a, obviously a challenge to get the right and most appropriate talent. But you have to appreciate that a platform uh, and a company that has been around for 50 years that is investing in growth of these businesses that has the kind of reputation that uh, JM enjoys, uh, it is definitely easier. We are, while it is easier uh, relative to the industry for us to acquire the right talent, we are also making this uh, you know, we are also aligning ourselves to make us, uh, you know, in, at par with industry so that we are giving the right options for our, for the teams that we bring on to be able to create wealth for them as well. So therein lies the whole idea of giving stock options in the businesses that they drive. Uh, we'd like for the employees to be aligned with us in terms of where we are building and creating value. And I think that benefits the shareholders as well. Okay. Uh, Chirag, just one more question on this, uh, that over the last three, four years, if you can just highlight how the, uh, you know, how has our coverage, uh, you know, the sector coverage, the client coverage increased because, uh, you know, the markets have become deeper, new, you know, so many new sectors like, you know, electronic manufacturing, cap goods, so many new sectors have revived. So any, uh, like, you know, any flavor here would be... Uh, you know, yeah, no, I, look, the coverage for us is, is multifold. We are also, we, are very, we look at coverage both from an investment banking perspective and there's also the wealth perspective. Uh, there's the institutional business will also look at covering them. So you have to also appreciate that there is, this is among the few financial institutions that have all of these businesses housed under one umbrella that allows us to really focus on the cross sell here. So it, it, the coverage doesn't get restricted to one aspect of the business which allows us to work together pretty closely to be able to benefit from the coverage that each of the other divisions does. Okay, okay. and then fair to say that we would probably be in under expansion mode in all these businesses in terms of talent hiring, uh, the investment banking, institutional equities and so on. I think the way we look at this is the institutional equities and the investment banking, we continue to consolidate our leadership over there. And in the wealth and asset management uh, and the financial services businesses, that remains another high focus area for us where we want to, uh, you know, seriously ratchet up our leadership over there as well. So one place we're consolidating, we are the existing leaders and we'll consolidate it further. The others will focus on and take leadership over there as well. Oh, and, you know, it's a people business, so we clearly understand that. And if we have to invest in the people, we continue. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chirag. Thanks, Vishal. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chintan Shah from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. 
thank you for the opportunity uh, so sir uh, firstly uh, on this uh, book rundown uh, which we are talking about uh, so here as uh, the rundown uh, would you, uh, can it be uh, presumed that the rundown would la- uh, would largely be towards the uh, from the wholesale lending uh, under the uh, financial credit solutions uh, so now uh, by june 2026 we can presume that there would be no chunky uh, outstanding wholesale loan accounts uh, which would be uh, outstanding uh can that be a uh, fair assumption to make yeah. no so if you if you look at page 7 it reduces quite dramatically but uh, there still will be roughly 3 to 3 and a half thousand crores of outstanding because specifically in the in the real estate project finance space we do have maturities running all the way to 27 28 and in the msme business uh, we do have maturities which run you know for the next 6 to 7 years Uh, so th- around 3000 to 3500 crores remains outstanding beyond june 26 but if you look at page 7 uh, the gross debt of the existing businesses over there the net cash that we have is much higher than the gross debt so technically for us almost 5 to 6000 crores is free cash flow uh, for making investments to boost syndication or increase payout or just run treasury Sure, sure, understood, understood. And uh, so, uh, sir, but uh, this is no longer a focus area that we can uh, at least say the uh, wholesale lending business. Yeah, right? you can, you can, you can, you can completely uh, make the assumption very clearly that wholesale lending and adding assets on a book from a uh, uh, from a lending perspective, as in looking at book growth, is no longer our focus. Uh, so for all practical purposes you can say that we have exited the real estate lending business and we have exited the distress credit business we do not want these risk sitting on our balance sheet we are extremely clear we will only originate these businesses to distribute to our market our our clients in the market which we are building sales and distribution and we'll build that over the next 6 to 12 months Yes, there will be a hold that we will need to have in those assets, but the hold is not going to be upwards of two thousand crores to two thousand five hundred crores in real estate and distress credit. And on top of that, uh, we will build uh, AIF for land transactions, which is another core important area of focus for us. And through the land AIF, not only will we fund land, we will also co-syndicate to our LPs, uh, you know, larger financing for land. Okay, sure. And so, sir, uh, what about the 3.4 percent um, net NPV which we have in the financial credit solution? So, uh, any kind of resolutions expected there? And I think uh, there were two, three chunky projects which were kind of uh, undergoing some resolution. Uh, so, has there been any progress on that, or do we expect also that to gradually uh, have some resolution by June 2026 there as well? Yeah. Yeah. So that's an excellent question. Uh, in our in our cash and cash equivalents. we have not included any cash flow which is from the resolution of our npa accounts so over the next two years if we have any resolution for my npa accounts that will increase the cash and cash equivalents in jm financial credit solutions and jm financial products uh, so that has not been included uh, to give you guidance on that number that that number is around 500 crores to 600 crores on a gross npa basis if we were to recover uh, everything if you assume that we even recover uh, what is unprovided for that number will be at least 250 to 300 crores in credit solutions so uh, that's very clear uh, so so now uh, on the uh, aws thing and on the uh, investment phase so now uh, as we believe uh, we seem to have been seeing since the past four five quarters we have made some senior management hires across the uh, non lending uh, businesses and on uh, the cause of that there has been a significant um, bump up in the cost to income and uh, so where do we see the cost to income for uh, aws kind of settling uh, over fy 25 or 2016 when do we see the Yeah, so I'll have uh, Chirag and Sonia answer that question. I'll only answer one part of it. That yeah. uh, right now, while cost to income is a very important parameter for the AWS business, 
which in our new avatar we are calling wealth and asset management we are still in heavy investment mode in asset management pms as well as digital uh, so you will only see a stabilized cost to income somewhere in the year 26 and 27 because right now we are still in investment mode uh, on recruitment etc chirag and sonia will take the questions yeah i think just to add to what vishal said uh, we continue to be in investment mode there uh, what you're seeing is of course uh, some of the cost being front ended because of the people that we're taking on as the revenues kick in from those uh, hirings you'll see that change as well uh, we will stabilize vishal at the start of the call mentioned how uh, you know the the digital uh, uh, broking group will stabilize as well and once the digital piece settles as well you'll see Uh, you know that bearing fruit in terms of the numbers showing up much better as well. I hi Sonia here. Yeah, I think uh, you know, like uh, was mentioned by the earlier uh, question, in the Indian capital markets are deepening and widening, and you know we believe, given our inherent strengths of having very strong relationships, very strong understanding, very strong capability to structure, we are keen to have uh, you know the best team. uh and we will deepen and widen uh both on origination and execution our teams uh because we see that there is a lot to be captured uh and we'll continue to make sure that you know we uh, focus on the hiring the best and also retaining and training them and you know i think one more comment uh, to add to what chirag and sonia are saying that uh today i mean the amount of business that is visible uh from corporate clients uh, ultra hni clients as well as private equity clients is absolutely mind blowing uh and i think the uh, if we were to add people and the right kind of people i think they they their their ability to generate revenue uh is no longer a stretch timeline i think they can literally hit the road running i mean that is the kind of volume of business uh which is visible on the capital markets as well as the wealth management side and i i foresee the same thing happening uh, on the private credit side i think private credit has been slow uh, for the last 4 to 5 years because you've seen an unbelievable bull run in equities uh, and like all of us know right that you know the equity story is not always a rising story uh, and uh, you know you will see a significant shift uh, in the next 4 5 years where equity will continue to outperform but there will be a very strong asset class being built around private credit and both our investment bank and our wealth management already have the origination side in place so our focus is really to build more structuring more sales and more distribution there so so actually this is quite helpful and quite clear yeah uh, thank you uh, thank you for uh, uh, answering all my questions patiently thank you thanks thank you the next question is from the line of shitat sarab from tusk investments please go ahead Hi, good afternoon. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, what is the normal the investment banking side once we take out the interest component, uh, which seems to be growing year on year uh, because of the debt issuance? Uh, on the transaction side, uh, we see around 240 crores of revenue last year, and this quarter, this year, it's about 265. And uh, I. uh our private wealth even has grown 27 or percent in the same period so if you could just help understand the moving parts over here sure so i think you know our the way we model the integrated investment bank till this quarter last quarter was always going to be with the earnings of the private credit business which is the bespoke finance business and the corporate lending business as part of uh, uh, the investment bank what we are doing is we are simplifying that structure which you see on page 6 where going forward the corporate advisory and capital market business will not have kind of the lending uh, revenue in it um the lending revenues uh, will sit in the private credit syndication business what the corporate advisory and capital market business will have will have a origination fee for bringing the business to the private credit syndication group and therefore it simplifies the structure because 
uh, the uh, the capital requirements for the corporate advisory and capital market business is very very small, and this would be uh, even with the capital of three or four hundred crores, they will be able to generate upwards of 50, 60 percent ROE. Uh, <clears throat> so this is kind of the split, and therefore on the pure investment banking side, uh, the revenue number along with institutional equities would be circa between 400 to 500 crores. That number, I think the expected growth will be in the high teens uh, over the next couple of years. Understood. And in terms of Q1, was it a bit slow because of several macroeconomic factors? Do you see Q2 getting better? For example, we see more ICOs, uh, a little larger sizes, 2, two to 4,000 crores more in the second quarter? Yes. Um, and I also what happens is the timeline to book the fees is after the IPO closures. So, uh, you know, we have closed quite a few large QIPs this quarter and some of the uh, IPOs that we closed last quarter, the fees will be booked actually this quarter. But you're right, uh, many large deals are getting launched uh, in this quarter too. Okay. And lastly, we have 44 uh, wealth managers on the private wealth side. Uh, what is our what is our plan in terms of people on this plan? Uh, look, the the private wealth business for us is one of the big focus businesses for us. Uh, I don't want to give you a number in terms of where we take the RMs or the relationship managers over the next 12 or 18 months, but uh, you should know that. The way we look at this is what you're seeing is just the private wealth is 44. There is also what we call the elite wealth, which has another 54 odd relationship managers. So we, from our point of view, we're at 100 plus, which we will continue to grow as we continue to focus on this business. And as you, you know, in going back to, to a question that someone else was asking, uh, please don't think of these additions to the team as just from a cost income of that business. We are massively driving the cross-sell across, uh, you know, taking the corporate as a client or taking the institution as a client, and we're driving the cross-sell across businesses. So while you may be, you will see the benefits of that cross-sell coming through in the quarters to come as well. Um, but yeah, you know, from a, from our end perspective, we are currently the way we look at it, we are at 100 today, and we'll continue to grow that. All right. Lastly, on the regulator front, is there any update we have or post the last slide? So from the so two things. So from the RBI perspective, uh, the special audit is complete. And uh, we have uh, submitted our response uh, to RBI. Uh, so we will discuss and uh, uh, work with RBI towards closure. Uh, as far as the uh, SEBI piece is concerned, uh, we are fully cooperating with them in terms of the information that they need to complete their investigation. Uh, so that's, that's the update. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Manoj Dua from Geometric. Please go ahead. The line from Mr. Manoj seems to be disconnected. Shall we move to the next question, sir? Yes. Sure. The next question is from the line of Apurva Sharma from Pukal Rock. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, a few questions. Uh, so on slide 28, we are seeing we saw in Q1 FI 24 of 8, 18 crore of investments in ELC and digital, and this quarter it was around 33 crores. So uh, what is it? Uh, the likely level will it be at this level, or how do we see it going forward? Yeah, so I'll take that question. I think it will be around 25 to 30 crores for digital every quarter. And it will be between 10 to 15 crores on uh, asset management 
and another say five to ten crores for the AIF business. Uh, so roughly all put together, you should assume uh, 50 crores per quarter will be the investment. Uh, and uh, we will continue investing over eight quarters. So it's almost a three to 400 crore investment. All of this investment will get funded hopefully from the profitability of the business, uh, considering the pipeline as well as the growth in the business looks very robust. And uh, next question is, uh, what is the cost of funds for JM Financial Home Loans and how has it moved in the past one year or so? You know, just wanted some color on that. So, uh, Manish here, and this, uh, on cost of fund of JM Financial Home Loan, you have to understand that 25% roughly of the liabilities funded through National Housing Bank Refinance Scheme and balance is uh, funded through bank borrowing as well as the NCD. All liabilities are long term. I, total cost of fund is up to around 8.56%, and incremental cost of fund is around 9%. So, from 8.56 to incremental of 9%, yes. that's what you are saying. Okay. Uh, 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 so, on, uh, again, uh, you know, uh, the EMI bounce ratio, as you are seeing, was around 17.3%. For March 24, but uh, collection efficiency is shown as 99.1%, right? So, how should we look at this data? And uh, then I have a follow up on this here. Correct, correct. So, you know, basically there are various people show it very differently, but what we show is the current month collection efficiency. That means if current month I have put, let us say, 20,000 customers EMI. Out of that 17% bounce, roughly, you know, 3,400, whatever that number is. And out of that, we cover, we, we recover or collect the 99%. So we don't count as like post outstanding offer or an EMI of the last month collected this month as part of the collection efficiency. Okay. And uh, so uh, who, uh, whose responsibility is the collection team, you know, and how often does the follow-up happen and how big is it, the collection team? So just... Yeah, so uh, good question. So, you know, when we started this year, this business, uh, you know, six years back, uh, we were the first one to hire collection head as well as all the collection executives. So as a process, uh, wherever there is a branch which has more than 20, 25 bounces, we put collection executive. Till then, we sales and credit who kind of collect this, the bounces. Today, the team is as large as 100 people on the collection on the executive side, and there are six to seven people on the litigation side. And the structure wise, we have national collection, we have state level collection, we have area collection, as well as collection executive. So, out of 112 odd branches, uh, around 80, 85 branches would have collection executive uh, responsible for the collection. At the same time, 12 month MOB uh, bounces is also collected by the sales and credit jointly along with the collection guys. And we have a separate vertical, so collection reports to the collection head, sales and credit. Nobody reports in a branch to, you know, branch head. We don't have a branch head concept, we have a separate vertical. Okay. Everybody sits in a branch, but they report to the vertical head. Oh. Yeah, thank you for the detailed answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question. This is on the line of Sandeep Thakkar, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you sir, for the opportunity uh, for a question. Uh, a question is also Hello. Sorry to interrupt, yes, yes. Sandeep. We can hear you, but we can't hear you very clearly. Yes, sir. Uh, just a moment, sir. Just a moment, sir. Uh, just a moment, sir. Yes, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, uh, sir, uh, question, sir. Uh, we are very old company, sir, and uh, uh, yeah, we are very good promoters, owners. We have uh, passed the daily with Morgan Stanley. So, yeah, our portfolio is very good, sir. So, my question is, sir, uh, why don't we grow like other uh, mutual aid for yeah, it's a very good question. And the answer is yes, we want to grow like them. 
and you want to be as big as them and that is the idea of the entire uh, sort of version 2 for us where we do not want to focus on leverage businesses except for our retail home loans business and the margin trade finance business and the idea is to get bigger uh, in the businesses what our brand stands for and what our brand is known for sorry i can't i can't hear you clearly or your voice is grumbling sorry it's not clear sir hum kab accept kar sakte hai is tarah ke growth ke liye sir abhi we are we are aiming to grow as fast as we can in home loans we want to grow at 35% and in our uh, corporate advisory and capital markets business we want to grow in the high teens and on the wealth management side we want to grow between 25 and 30% thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for the day i would now like to hand the conference over to mr vishal kampani for closing comments uh yes uh, thank you very much for uh, participating on our quarterly call uh, and uh, as promised we started the quarterly call this year and we will continue with this format to have a call every quarter uh and uh, i look forward to interacting with you all uh, on the calls as well as in person uh and uh, uh you know with that uh, i hand it back to the moderator and uh, thank you everyone on behalf of jm financial that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line